let's go to the complete and narrated chapter of One Piece 1111 after the opening. Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, and before the content of this video, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell. That way you won't miss anything. And let's get into the content of this video. We have the first colored page, which is from the jump, where we see the monster trio. All wearing different outfits, a very interesting cape with Luffy, Sanji, and Zoro. Then we have the double colored inner cover of the chapter, where we see the straw hats, all eating potato chips. We have Bonnie in her child form, that is, her normal form, and Vegapunk Stella is also there. Contrary to what we thought, we didn't have a tribute to Toriyama. I believe there wasn't enough time to make that tribute, and I think it will come at another time. The title of Chapter 1111 of One Piece is The Shield of the Sun, referring to a power of Dory and Brogi that we will see later in the chapter. Since the first two pages are colored, we start with page three, by the way, a chapter with 19 pages, quite a big chapter. Page 3 The chapter begins by showing Labo Faze's barrier. We see that Mars is attacking it furiously. We can see black lightning in the explosions, an indication that hockey is being used in Mars's attacks. So Saint Marcus Mars breaks Labo Faze's barrier. The first person he sees inside is Jinbei. Page 4 Jinbei sees Mars and comments, what strong hockey? Jinbei then approaches Zoro and asks something like, is your fight over Zoro? Zoro replies, not yet, he's still standing. Luchi is in a wounded state. He has three slash marks on his torso. He's shouting or growling but still standing, refusing to fall. Sanji then says to Jinbei, did you take him with you? Referring to Zoro. Jinbei then replies, I'm doing that now. Page 5. Jinbei. Let's go, Zoro. You've won. Jinbei grabs Zoro to flee from there. Jinbei looks at Rob Lucci, who hasn't fallen yet. Then he says, Fishman Karate. Forgive me. Rob Lucci. 5,000 tile sword. Gosen Mayagawara Shuto. Note. Upon seeing the originals, I think Jinbei didn't attack Lucci with this technique. I believe he used it as a smokescreen, meaning, Lucci's fall that follows seems not to be Jinbei's doing but rather what Zoro did. Page 6. Mars sees Luchi. He's back in his human form. Jinbei is flying away, and Zoro is sitting on his back. Zoro sees Mars and says, Hey, what's that? Mars asks Luchi where York is. Luchi replies that York is being held in the control room of Building A, fourth floor. Luchi then says, The two who just escaped from here are Roronoa Zoro and the first son of the sea Jinbei. The rest are five members of the Straw Hat crew and two Vegapunks who are at the rear exit of Labaface preparing to escape. At the bottom of the laboratory are 85 Cypherpole agents and four Seraphim. Page 7. Luchi says that Vegapunk's message will begin in six minutes. Mars praises Luchi. Mars says, I have nothing more to ask. Luchi then says, Furthermore, my injured partner is there. Please spare his life. He's talking about Kaku. Mars then replies, That would be difficult. Not stepping on an insect that is destined to be stepped on. Ages 8 to 9. The scene changes. We see Luffy smiling. He has just been saved by the giants, as we saw in chapter 1110. Luffy then says, It's been two years already, old school giants. Dory says, Straw Hat, we hardly recognize you with that appearance. Broji says, Gaba Baba, how do you know that form of the god that is being told and transmitted in Elbaf? Luffy says, hmm, not understanding what they're talking about. Brogi says, I'm talking about your appearance. We're very happy. Gaba Baba. Luffy says, I have no idea what you're talking about, but let's talk later. War Curry, who is staring at them, says, the giants? Saturn says, this is a bad combination. Dory says, these are some gigantic beasts. It's like the beasts in the forest of Elbaf. Note, interesting information here. Luffy then says, old man, our goal isn't to fight but to escape. Dory says, yes, we know, we met Sanji earlier. Brogi says, he told us, if you find Luffy, 
run to the back of the island. We see a quick flashback of that moment, Sanji say. Dori, Broji, we're counting on you. Broji say, understood. See you later. Back to the present. Dori say, we saw in the newspapers and came here to rescue all of you. It says you're surrounded by the Marines. So we see an image of all Egghead and the siege that's being made, and the location of each straw hat. Page 10. Dory blew a Viking horn. The Giants hear it. Giants say, It seems our captains have met with Luffy the Straw Hat. Return to the ship. Our escape begins now. Our only mission is to retrieve them and escape. Even if we attack these ships, it's not like they have any treasure anyway. Marines then shout, Damn it! Page 11. War Curie notices all this and says, A retreat signal, huh? Now that's a problem. I'll also sound my alert cry. War Curie shouts, So, don't run. War Curie lets out a loud cry infused with hockey, just like Big Mom did at the tea party. We see many black lightning bolts coming out of his roar. Double page 1213. The roar caused Luffy's eyes, the scar on his chest, the hat, the sandals, and even the folded hem of his shorts to stand out from his body. A very funny scene. Brogy makes a surprised face, laughing a lot. Warcury's roar extends throughout the outer part of the island, reaching the marine warships. Some marines are fainting, proving that this is Conqueror's hockey. Brogy asks Luffy if he's okay. Dory comments that he has a funny body. Luffy returns to normal. His eyes, scar, and clothes return to his body. In this case, back to the Nika form. Dory says, A conqueror's hockey-colored roar? Who the hell is this guy? Brochi says, Looks like he's one of those arrogant guys from the world government. War Curry advances towards them. Dory and Brochi block War Curry's two saber teeth with their shields. They say Svelin. Slaven is the name of a legendary Nordic shield that protects the sun. Page 14. Warkuri says, you deeply destined beings. Do you know who you're protecting? Dorian Brogi. Of course. He's our friend. Gabababa. Gigya gig gig. Skilge. The kanji used here means to separate isolate. The kana reading is skilge, the Norwegian word for separate. Page 15. Seaturn says. As long as you call him that, there is more reason for him to be erased. From the history records. Saturn spits out some black bubbles. Luffy then says to the giants, That's definitely poison. Don't touch. Luffy grabs a tree and turns it into a baseball bat by gnawing on it. Meaning, without tomb force, he just turned the tree into rubber and molded it. Pages 16, 17 Luffy paints the bat and on it is the number 56. 56 can be read as gomu, rubber in Japanese. Look at the goroas being used here. He bats the poison bubbles back at the gorosei. Luffy says, ah yeah, 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 you can have your poison back. The poison bubbles explode. Luffy does his usual surprise G5 face with bulging eyes. Luffy says, what? They exploded. Giants say, captains, the fire will block the forest. Dory says, all right, let's go. Brogi then says, looks like they've been blown up. Gaba baba. Luffy says, let's hurry. After all, those guys are immortal. Page 18. Dory shouts, run! What do you mean they're immortal? Luffy then says, I don't know. No matter what I do to them, they just recover. Brogi says, I've never heard of an ability or race that can do that. You said run, but where to? Gaba Baba. The fire is blocking their path. We see Nami saying, hurry, Jinbei, Zoro. Jinbei says, yes, I'm on my way. It's faster if I run. Bonnie says, look, in front of the ship. Vice Admirals Pomsky, Guillotine, and Red King are blocking their path. The Vice Admirals say, We won't let you board this ship, Jewelry Bonnie. Page 19. Mars sees York and asks where the message is being transmitted. York is scared to see Mars' bestial form. Marines say to Kizaru, Please let me see and treat your injuries, Kizaru-san. Kizaru, who is still covering his eyes with his hand, says, Indeed, I am injured. Deeply injured. Note, I got the feeling that Kizaru isn't talking about physical injuries here. Marines say, then let's treat you immediately. Kizaru replies, just let me rest. 
some other marines say. Reporting, something much larger than the giants has appeared inside the island. As they talk, we see the ancient iron giant. He is truly bestial in size. Marines say, this is the naval force in the northwest of Egghead. It seems that the fire isn't affecting it. It seems that the gigantic creature in the midst of the flames is muttering something. The Iron Giant then says, I'm sorry. Joy Boy. Final note. What is the reason behind the apology? End of the chapter and a break for three weeks. The next chapter officially releases on April 22nd. That's it. And that was the complete and narrated chapter. If you liked the video, don't forget to leave your like, subscribe to the channel, and activate the notification bell. Until next time, and thanks.